What's up YouTube? Daniel Carter at Afro Herp Keeper here. Today I'm back to show you guys one of my newest additions, a Scolopendra Heros Castaniceps, or Texas Giant Red-Headed Centipede, and explain how to properly set it up in a 2.5 gallon aquarium. This is a very cool species of centipede native to my area. This one was actually brought to me by a friend who uh, captured it in their house, didn't want it around, and instead of killing it or disposing of it, decided to bring it to me instead. And this individual is still a juvenile. It's only about four inches long, but this species can attain lengths of eight inches or longer. It is a very cool animal. It is venomous, so I wouldn't recommend handling them. It can be done, but as I said, I wouldn't recommend it. And they are a fairly simple animal to take care of. Uh, apart from having the right enclosure and the right humidity and temperature requirements, all you have to do is make sure that they have enough water and throw in a cricket, a roach, or a superworm every so often. I would say uh, at least once weekly. So now that we've been properly acquainted, without any further ado, let's show you how to set this guy up. So to create this setup, we're only going to need a few basic simple materials. It's not a very large animal, doesn't require that extensive of care, and so what we're going to be using as the enclosure itself is a 2 or 2.5 gallon glass aquarium. You can also use um, a plastic carrier with a very well fitting lid with no large holes, you could use a plastic tote with holes drilled in the sides, or you could use something like an upright uh, 1 or 2 gallon jug. For this setup we're going to be using, this is either a 2 or 2.5 gallon glass aquarium. Um, the lid just slides off, there's little latches on the top. Uh, it does not have the best ventilation, it does have these little holes on the sides, so it won't be airtight in there, but so long as we keep the humidity under check, the centipede will do just fine. This kind of lid also means that there is very, very little chance of escape. There aren't that many materials we're actually going to be putting in the tank, as uh, Scolopendra centipedes typically have pretty simple care. In fact, all of this decor is kind of overdoing it. Really all we need is our substrate and one or maybe two hides. We have two different kinds of substrate here that I'm going to be mixing. A lot of people recommend using a mixture of sand and peat moss for this species. I don't actually have peat moss on hand, and this animal was caught locally. So what I'm going to be doing is actually using soil from outside my house. This is from a pesticide free area. Um, it's clean. It's not going to be any problem for the animal. And this is actually primarily clay. I've done a test on the soil outside my house. This stuff is mostly clay and there are some chunks of limestone in there as well. So this stuff we are actually going to be mixing with sphagnum moss. Uh, we're going to be getting this wet and this is going to hold humidity in our enclosure. It's also going to keep the substrate a little bit airy so that the centipede has something to dig through. For our decor down here, uh, hides and such, we've got two nice looking pieces of cork bark. I'm thinking that this one is going to go upright and this one, because it's sort of a half log shape, is going to go propped up a little bit against it. Maybe this end will dip underground. Right here I've got a little slate tile. Just going to put this in there as an option for it to burrow under if it so chooses. Um, here, this is a domestic cat skull. used to think it was a ringtail skull, but a few commenters corrected me a while back. This was found by a friend of mine on their ranch. Obviously, I didn't go out and kill a cat or something for this skull. It was found from an already deceased animal, and it's going to be going to good use in this terrarium. I think it'll make a very nice centerpiece for a centipede tank. And our last piece here is a little water dish. Some will say that these aren't completely necessary, and there is a little bit of debate on that, but I personally have seen centipedes drink out of these, so I'm going to be including one just in case mine needs it. Now, we've already sanitized this enclosure, washed it with warm water and soap, used a uh, reptile and invertebrate safe disinfectant on it. So we're going to go ahead and mix these two substrates. I'm actually gonna pour the sphagnum moss first because it is definitely lighter. And now we have our clay and soil mixture. Like I said, this can be substituted by sand, peat moss, potting soil. There are quite a few things that can work. And now what we're going to do is just mix this up nice and evenly. We're going to get it damp after this. And it looks like we actually only have about an inch, maybe two at most, 
of substrate in here, so I'm going to go grab some more real quick because this species ideally needs between four and six inches of substrate. So we want this tank about halfway full. Now I did underestimate the uh, surface area of the tank by a fair margin, so as you can see, I am quite literally just outside my house digging dirt right now. If you caught a centipede locally and you are uh, working with local materials, then if you can collect dirt like this from a pesticide-free safe area, then by all means, I think it would make a great substrate for your animal in particular. If your centipede was bred in captivity or you're not sure about the origins of it, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this, or if you do, at least bake the dirt first. You can find plenty of guides for sterilizing and sanitizing dirt and rocks online. Now, here's something you don't see every day. Uh, while digging through the bucket of dirt that I collected, I found what I think is a clutch of Texas spiny lizard eggs. Now, these ones in particular look quite infertile, so I wouldn't worry about them. I actually handled these ones, and they were bright yellow on the inside, which indicates that there was never anything alive in there to say. So our substrate has successfully been added. I included about four inches of our soil and sphagnum moss mix, um, made sure it was nice and mixed up, got it a little wet, compacted it, and cleaned off the sides of the tank. So now I think we are about ready to arrange our decor inside. I'm thinking this piece could use to be propped up in this corner in some way. May have to dig a little bit to get it in place. Now, don't be afraid to get your hands messy and don't be afraid to go back and change things if you think they look strange. It's only by experimenting and playing around with the stuff that you're not sure about that you're going to make the tank look really good. So I like the way that looks there. I'm gonna see if I can prop this up against here. I think that looks pretty good as well. If I include this maybe a bit further down here, I think that looks great, but the uh, wood is almost the exact same color as the dirt, so I think I'm gonna drape some sphagnum moss over this to try and give it a bit more of a, uh, to try to make it pop a bit more. I'm going to additionally dig a little space out in the front for a water dish. It is pretty sizable, but I won't be filling it too deep. And you know what, with all of that in there already, I don't really think there's a place for our slate tile. So I'm gonna set that aside, use it in some other project in the future. I think the cat skull can go right here in this corner and that'll look very nice. But to touch this up just a little bit more, I am going to include some more sphagnum moss. I've gotten this stuff wet so that it can be draped over the wood pieces. Maybe I'll include a little bit on the ground under the skull. We'll see where we go with this. Again, this is purely for aesthetic purposes. You really don't need any of this stuff. I think it definitely improves the look of this back corner here. Include a little bit of it for this skull to rest on. And I think to finish this up a bit, we are going to drape a little bit on top of the wood pieces as well, just to accentuate that a little bit. Make the wood stand out a bit more from the dirt on the bottom. And this is what we're left with. We even have the option of making this enclosure bioactive if we so choose. We could put a uh, cleanup crew in this enclosure to help dispose of the centipede's wastes and uneaten food items. If we were to do that in an enclosure like this, I think roly-polies, pill bugs, um, some desert species of isopods would certainly do the trick. So I am going to go grab our little centipede and we will see how he likes this. And to ensure he doesn't drown, I have at least for the time being, filled the water dish with damp paper towel. Uh, obviously we don't want this to mold, so we should check on it pretty often, uh, make sure it doesn't have anything growing on it, and replace it every so often, just to be sure that it's not um, fouling the cage at all. In addition, you could probably use water crystals intended for irrigating plants. Uh, I've seen centipedes drink out of those before. Or you could use a very shallow layer of standing water, but I think this will keep a little bit longer. So here's our little guy. He's still quite small for his species, but I think this cage is definitely going to be a step up. A very active little fella. This guy's been eating uh, mostly crickets in the past week or so since he was brought to me. He's none too happy about all the sudden changes, but there he goes. Now as you can see, there are certainly spots in the enclosure where he could escape. So we're going to slide this on as quickly as we can. This species is very adept 
at escaping. I've kept them before, mostly as adults, but I did have a juvenile once and kept it in a critter keeper with the holes just slightly too large. Never saw it again. So this type of enclosure, certainly a bit more suitable for this species. You can see he's found a spot behind the cork bark there to rest for now. Uh, if you set up an enclosure for a Scolopendra heros giant red-headed centipede properly, you're not going to see it very often, if at all. Once these guys find a crevice and a piece of wood or a nice spot under the leaves and the dirt, uh, you're really not going to see very much of them. And that's a good thing. It means that they're happy, healthy, doing well in their enclosures. So long as they're eating well and growing, you know you're doing a good job. And that's really about all there is to it. Uh, I'm sure our centipede friend will be out and about exploring quite shortly, but until then, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions about the setup, about centipedes, or about anything else, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I always try to get back to as many comments and questions as possible. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like to let me know, and if you're new to the channel, this is your first time watching, feel free to hit the subscribe button to see more videos of reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates in the future. Thanks again for watching.